Uh, well, well, I will uh, keep this brief. I have no desire to intrude into your lunchtime. I have been offered the position of assistant practice manager at King's Green Medical Center. Congratulations. Thank you. It is all due to uh, Dr. Reed's glowing reference. I hesitated telling you because I really, I really do not want a fuss. So that bloke was yesterday. And King's Green is a really impressive practice. Well done, Mrs. Tambo. No, it is a, a, a wonderful opportunity for me. And, uh, but Mr. Harker has allowed me to, uh, to leave without working my week's notice. Wow. You just can't wait to get shot of us, can you? Oh, no. I will be leaving some, some wonderful friends. I'm so excused. You must have known about this. And he only told us last night. And you're happy to just watch her go? Of course not. This is a really big step up for her. To the left of me, jokers to the right. Here I am, stuck in, in the, the middle, middle with you. How's it going? I cannot <laughs> believe it. Oh, we can get to see you, man. It's been too long. Oh, oh, the folks, uh, this is Grady, my brother from another planet. Ladies, <laughs> where are you from? Uh, Boston, ma'am. <laughs> what are you doing here? Men on a mission. Some things can't be done on Skype. I got a proposal for you. Al, Yoda Heskey, Slayer of the Virtual Dragons, Keeper of the Sacred Fallen Down Water. Will you make me the happiest man alive? Marry me. So again? I figured nothing fancy. County hall, matching suits. <laughs> we'll go in there. Mate, what is this all about? You've got these new marriage equality laws over here. It'll just make it easy for me to stay here permanent. You know, I, I've had enough of the States. I was always happier here. No. You love America. You're my best friend. No one else comes close. You know, I, I want you in my life, and you need me in yours. Well, yeah, that's true, but marriage. No, no, I know. I mean, I love you, but I'm not in love. You know, men are from Mars, men are from Mars, and, and you know me, I'm a don't knock it till you try kind of Martian. Yeah, you know, sex is overrated in my book. Yeah, a marriage of convenience. Hey, hey, feel free to get a little on the side when we're hitched. <laughs> You're leaving? What, what today? Why, why are they in decent haste? Well, uh, an opportunity for, for advancement has presented itself. Then we must match it. No, you, your, your going is out of the question. I, I can't imagine the place without you. Life depends on change. Uh, and I think it is for the best. Who's best? I, uh, I have a lot of things to see to before I go here. Uh, excuse me. Time for a reality check. Marrying you would make me the luckiest man in the unknown universe, but under these circumstances, it would be illegal. And that would get me struck off and I'd lose all my mad scientist privileges. But I'm going to do everything that is superhumanly possible to make it that you can, you can live here and you can work here. Al, oh, is this a dude moment? No, it's been too long. And, you know, there are not enough Martians around. Dude! 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 <laughs> oh. Oh. Jimmy's just told me about Mrs. Tembe. Oh, hello. Oh, um, um, Grady, Neve, Neve. Grady. Neve Donahue. 
Al must have mentioned his best bud. I'm three quarters Irish myself. Oh yeah, I could really tell by your accent. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That's a very tight grip you have there. <laughs> I'm uh, all about the hugs today. <laughs> Can I crash at your place? I could use a shower, change your clothes. Yeah, of course. The thing is, I'm due at the hospital for a meeting like five minutes ago, and I've got surgery this afternoon. I can't, but... Al! Come on, just let him in and show him where the kettle is. Spoiler alert, it's in the kitchen. You owe me, Donna Who. What for? For like millions of things. I can't specifically think of one of those things right now. Just think of all the embarrassing stories that Grady can tell you about me. Black male stories you wouldn't believe. Go on, then. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Apart from being an excellent receptionist, Mrs. Tembe is the face of the mill, the vital link between us and the patients. Both of which are valid points, both of which are equally met by Karen and Valerie. I don't think you appreciate her value to the team. Don't I? Well, if you did, you'd put up more of a fight. What makes you think I didn't? No one is more saddened by this turn of events than I am. Well, I hardly think I that... can't prevent someone from moving up the promotional ladder. It would be selfish of us to stand in her way, wouldn't it? But it's so sudden. Yes, it is. So what was he like then, Husky the Younger? I'll get some coffee on the go. You're pretty at home here. Well, yeah, given our history. Grace. When she got there, there was no milk, there was no bread, there was no coffee. Just last night's Kung Po chicken climbing up an overflowing bin. Can't be easy for him alone. I was chief cook and washer up back in the day. And you know, maybe he's had his head down working. Yeah, and doing an X Files marathon more like. Right, uh, why don't you grab a shower and I'm gonna pop out and get some supplies. Fine. I won't be long. I think we messed up. Huh? Oh. Letting go of Mrs. Tambay so easily. Not you as well. Come on. Listen, she was headhunted, all right? Kudos to her. Yeah, well, this comes from hiring Anthony. Who we agreed was the best candidate at the time. Look, I can understand that it must have left Mrs. Tembe considering her future, but it's business. Maybe we should have done more to keep her. By doing what? creating some sort of false position. She would have seen straight through that for what it was, a consolation prize. I know, but... Well, look, everybody's fond of her. I didn't want to see her go either. But you can't clip her wings, you know? You've got to be happy for her. How's it going? Yeah, the usual. Look, are you with Grady? He's not answering his phone. Oh, he's in the shower. Your fridge was like the Marie Celeste Husky. Yeah, well, Saturday's big shot day, isn't it? Look, can you tell him from me? I've done some research online to him staying here. Right. His best option is a UK ancestry visa. His nan was from Shropshire or somewhere, so he's eligible. Oh, that would be the three quarters Irish, wouldn't it? You looked this up during your meeting. No, I'm on a fag break. It was actually really easy to find, so I'm surprised that he didn't. Maybe he's the romantic type. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Da, 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 yeah, da, da, very funny. Oh, always the bridesmaid, Husky. Thank you. She'll be out of here in a few hours, and that'll be it. Couldn't you have done something? To a decision. Organise a send-off to let her know how much she'll be missed. Strict instructions. She wanted no fuss. I mean, I hinted at a whip round, and she said she'd give the money to charity. Well, she's always thinking of others, which is why we should do something for her. What do you reckon? Well, a party, obviously. OK, Mum, if you're sure. It's short notice, or maybe the icon. Call me if you need anything. Bye. We went to um, a place that did, what, what like, like a tea party, and she loved that. Tea? Yeah, you know, your favourite beverage. Well, we're not going to be able to get the venue at this late notice, but we could match it here. Can we? Oh, hey. I got you a little something to go with your coffee. Well, that, that's great. Uh, I could use something I... 
I thought I'd go to a local diner or something. Oh, you must be starving. She only had airport food. Well, I'll tell you what, we could go to the Icon and then meet Al after his work. Well, I guess that'd give us time to get to know each other. We're both going to be part of his life now. Yeah. Oh, um, there you go. Is that him? No, it's a colleague about a leaving do. Um, but he was trying to get a hold of you earlier. Yeah? Oh, he's been doing some checking up. Uh, about what? Did, did, did he tell you? I mean, is it something that... About you applying to stay here? <laughs> he, he do it, you know. Marry me. That's what best buds do. I'm sure if anyone could get him to commit, it would be you. Him and me. We could take on the world. Invincible. Mr. Turnbull, you said someone's looking for me? Uh, he does not have an appointment, but he's very insistent. Thanks. Hello, I'm Dr. Haskey. Haven't we, uh... Jonathan Roche, Dr. Haskey. I wondered if you'd remember me. Yeah, you're, you're Grady's father. You, you came over for graduation. Mm -hmm. I'll get straight to it. Has my son been in touch with you recently? He's been missing. Missing? Well, we discovered that he flew out of Boston about a week ago, and we have no idea where he is, so I've been trying to track you down. A week ago, he only got here today. Have you actually seen him? Is he okay? Yeah, he's fine. I mean, I'm a bit jet lagged. Well, please, where is he? He's at my house. Sorry, can we backtrack a bit? What, what's this about him being missing? Is uh, is there somewhere private we can go and discuss this? Yeah, sure. Grady's bipolar. Since when? He was diagnosed about a year ago. He started insisting that he did his best work late at night listening to B-52s. Whatever that is. The B-52s are a band. They're his favorite. Well, he had to have it on full volume to clear his thoughts, he said. And then, uh, of course, the neighbors complained, then he got arrested, so we got him some help. What kind of help? He was hospitalized for observation after making these grandiose claims about his work. He had all the answers. He was going to cure the world. Well, well, Grady's always been really up a beat. <laughs> I admire your loyalty, Dr. Haskey, but you have no idea what he's been like recently. And as a psychiatrist, he's been... Well, it's like uh, if you're crazy, it's easy to hide among your patients. All right, well, that kind of language is not going to help, is it? As far as we can tell, Grady's been off its meds for two weeks. Regardless of your opinion, I'm here to take my son home to get the treatment he needs. Well, if this is true, then he needs treatment before he goes anywhere. It's not my habit to lie. If something is wrong, then he needs stabilizing before he gets on a plane. He got here okay? Exactly. Grady! 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 No, he's not here. I'm going to give Neve a call. What's that? That's proof, if needed. I am hood hung. I'm on head hoeing. Uh, a moon hinged. L.A. Shiyak, Lasha Key, Al has Key. He does this sometimes. He claims people aren't who they seem and the proof is in solving their name. And only he can see things the right way, he says. Anagrams of mine and Neve's name. Can you see why I'm concerned he's not on his meds? Oh, yeah, because, because meds are always the answer, aren't they? Has it ever occurred to you to just talk to him. Or even better, you could listen to him. Well, that's pretty easy for you to say, isn't it? I don't have experience in this behavior, this yeah, bipolar yeah, But business. you do understand something about being a father. And he's still Grady. He's still your son. Mum's fine. Yeah, she knows where I am. Yeah, she's curled up on your sofa with a box set. OK, bye. Ah! Oh, I cannot believe this. <laughs> Token of our affection. Oops, there you go. Oh, oh. <laughs> I have run out of hands. <laughs> uh, if I could, this is not a time for delivering epithets. 
What's on that? Something boring. We are here to honour you, Mrs. Tembe, not just with flowers, but with our sincere thanks. Modest and unassuming as you are. And scary. <laughs> Thank you, Aisha. I, I think you'll find that's pronounced caring. <laughs> <laughs> I know praise does not sit well with you, Mrs. Tembe, but no one can deny the respect shown you this evening. I'm sure I speak for us all when I say we wish you well in your new career. In a nutshell, you will be missed. Alan, me, he's my other half, you know? We have to be together. He, he's the key to all this. Key to all what? Well, our future. What a success we'll make of that. Uh, who's for another drink? Oh, speak of the devil. What's he doing here? Why have you brought him? It's okay, he, he was worried about you. I'm relieved to see you, son. Oh, what's going on? He's my jailer. He locks me away and fills me with drugs. Why have you sided with him? We don't need anybody. I came to you for sanctuary. No one in Boston gets me anymore. My friends, family. Why don't we sit down? You're the key I can discuss it. Al has key. You're going to find an alternative to drugs, and I'm going to help you. Absolutely, I am. But first, I want you to tell me all about it. You're a genius. He's a brilliant inventor, and there's nothing he can't do if I'm with him. A marriage of the minds. Yeah, it always has been, and it always will be. So we're all going to sit down, yeah? And you're going to talk to us, and we're going to listen. Yes? Yeah, if that's what it takes, yes. Mate, how long since you last slept? I don't need to answer that. Will you take me to Ireland with you? They'll understand me there. Oh, I think you should stay here and talk to Al. You're right, he does have all the answers. Yeah, I do. No. All of you here. I'll find my own way. Son, wait. I have to go. Got a pack. This is what talking gets you. Three. From Dr. Granger, Dr. Carmichael, baby John. It is such an extravagant display. Zara might be a frosty cow, but she's got great taste. No sleep. Daniel sends his apologies as a tracker duties. And uh, this is from Tim. Oh. Hmm. Where is it? Oh, some patient's initiative you couldn't reschedule. Okay. So, this is from me and Rob. It's an electronic tag. <laughs> so, um, if you stray too far, run there where you are, come running. They're loose touch with it. But you have made that impossible. <laughs> to Mrs. Tembe. Oh, yeah, Mrs. Tembe. <laughs> How many of those have you had? It's Dutch courage. I can't believe that we're losing her. Yeah, yeah, no. Still, I'm with the most desirable woman in the room. Right, a desirable is in the eye of the beholder, and I really appreciate a little less hold. Brady! Brady, come on, man. Look, I know you think that I've let you down, but does that honestly sound like something that I would do to you? You can't stay in there forever, son. Your mother's been frantic since you disappeared. All right, two things that are not going to help are drugs and guilt. Look, you had your chance. He's my son, he's my responsibility. And you said yourself he's going to need something if he's getting on a plane. Medication can help to manage the situation. But if you think that you can anesthetize mania away so that it gives you an easier life, I'm sorry, but you are part of the problem. I just want my son back the way he was. Well, that might never happen. You don't love me. No, no we do. We, we all love you. That's, and that's what makes this so, so hard to deal with. And it's not fair to burden Dr. Haskey with it. I'm guilting him again. If it helps him deal with the situation, being here with me, then maybe that's something that we should explore. Look, how do I know this isn't where it all started? Here, with you. I mean, he came back from the UK with all these wild, crazy ideas in his head. All right, so, so he caught this from me. Look, he may think of you as some cozy British eccentric, but I think you're dangerous, and I don't like the influence you have over him. Right, so we've got drugs, and we've got guilt, and now we've got blame. Well, that's a fantastic combination, isn't it? Son. Hey. Did you mean that about staying here? Yeah, of course I did. Whatever it takes. Yeah, it would be like our post-grad year, wouldn't it? Do you remember that? We didn't know anybody. We were strangers in a strange land. Martians. Martians. Two Martians who found each other. 
and we found the B-52s and we stayed up all night laughing so hard that the neighbours complained. I forgot my CDs. No rock lobster. Yeah, but you got me. <laughs> my two favourite ladies conspiring over. Uh, how to keep you sober. Listen, I've told you about that. Anyone would think you were ashamed of being seen with me. Mrs. Tembe, holding hands in public, yes or no? Uh, please do not, as me told you, Dickhead Dr. Carter. You're doing a little bit more than holding hands, though, aren't you? Well, perhaps if you had a drink, you might lighten up and enjoy yourself. I'll be in touch. Rumour? Mrs. T, I just wanted to say goodbye. I know we've had our moments, and your hard work, too, but you're worth getting to know for all that. Well, oh, that is a unique compliment. Give him Hallett King's greeting, Winnie. <laughs> They're really lucky to have you. Hey, Winnie, everybody. Oh, no. Mother of Nurse of the Year here. Eesh, I thought you said this was a party. <clears throat> so we're agreed. No coercion on your part. You're going to listen to Grady. Of course. And dude, you're going to head back to Boston, you're going to get your meds sorted, and you're going to go and see a therapist. I don't need one. Look, I'm going to be monitoring things really closely from here. If there's anything that I don't like the sound of, I will be over there quick as I a... think we both want the best for him. You'll, you'll let me arrange an assessment before you fly? Yeah, of course we will. I've got your pills with me, so let's get back to the hotel. Or I could stay here and not take anything, because I really don't need it. Dude. Your dad's booked a hotel room. I think you two need to talk things over. You certainly need a good sleep. I'll be there first thing in the morning. Yeah? Yeah? You promise? Of course I promise. And that is a promise with Martian honour. Come here, you. Fiancé. <laughs> Time to go. I've been here five minutes. Always in a rush. I haven't had any cake yet. We'll take some with us, yeah? It's always, come here, don't do this, don't do that. Anyone would think that you're my mum when you'll know better. No. All right, Mrs Lee, we're going to go home now, so off we pop, let's go. I mean, hello, handsome. Get physical with it. What do you reckon, eh? Yeah, yeah, charming offer as it is. A married man. I'm not fussed. <laughs> Where's that tall northern bloke, you know? The one with the, the quiff? It's not here. Hmm? Shame. Looks like he could keep a girl's knicker drawer busy, that that's, one. That's really enough now, right, right, that's it. Come on. We're going home. The party's over. What? No! Come on, one for the road. No, 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 upside daisy. Off we go. Celebrate good times. Come on. <laughs> come on, come on. They both checked out. When? Oh, I'm sorry. Where, where were they going to? I'm not allowed to say. Right, I know you're not allowed to say, but they booked a car, didn't they? Mm. And that, that car was going to the airport, wasn't it? That lying, conniving... I, I don't mean you. Um, my name is Dr. Haskey. Mm -hmm. Did they at least leave me a message? Have a look. It's um, Dr. Haskey. Oh, yeah, here you go. Oh, mm. Thank you. Artist V. Beaver, Menu Olay. Thank you. Goodbye, Mrs. Tempe. Meeting you has been humbling. My time at the mill has been the, the happiest I have had since leaving Botswana. But there is a season for everything. And I will, uh, I will carry the weight of my experience. But it will not, it will not be a burden.
Because friends make the journey lighter. To be bereft of true friendship is the worst thing of all. Wherever life may take us. I will carry you all in my heart. I will always think of the mill as, uh, as my home. And you as my family. Just go, go, just... The rotors on top of everything else. This is Tambi had her faults, but she would never offload work like that. Oh, I'm gonna miss her. Not much of a housekeeper, this one, is she? And you're the perfect house guest. You've let yourself go a bit. Is it drugs? Please, Mrs. Hollins, just go. Wonder how Mrs. Tambi's going. <laughs> 